Hi, I'm Wes Allen with DM Tales, and today I'm going to be taking a look at yet another Foundry VTT module. This is my look at better roll tables. Let's roll it. So one of the things that I love about Foundry is that you can automate so much that's inside of it. And one of those cool things is for roll tables. If you're going to want to generate random loot or a random encounter, you can create that inside Foundry and it will display in Shad or set up a whole scenario for you. And in normal roll tables, you can set up a whole bunch of different results that come through text or entities or compendium items and then you can drag them into the scene as you see fit or onto somebody's character sheet if it's something like a magic item from a compendium. But one of the things that is really difficult about it is that when you see random tables inside a module it's never just one entity. It's always going to be one to six entities or one to three entities or two to four entities. And so the way that the Foundry default role tables are set up is when you get that actor or that entity who has to come into a random encounter, then you have to roll another set of dice in order to see how many you're going to drag on. Uh, better roll tables fixes that. Let's take a look. So I have uh, just a demo scene here with nothing on it at the moment, and I am going to look at my roll tables. So let's go to demo better. I've already created them up for you. And you can see right here that I have just a default table set up. So role formula is one to four because there's four entities in it. I have one text, just a nice flavored text of a cold wind blows, uh, two entities. So they're actors, a stone golem and a runner guard and a compendium item. So just a defender longsword. So if there's random loot that you want to give, that's how you set that up in a role table. But there's no way to say how many stone golems you want, because of course you want more than one, who wouldn't? Or how many of these runner guards I'm going to have. And so that's what better tables fixes. So I'm going to go to, from default table, I'm gonna to go to better table. And you can see it adds this formula here inside the items where it would be appropriate to have it. So what'll happen then is if it selects one of these entities that has a formula on it, it's going to make that second roll, and then it's going to throw two of those items onto the chat where you can then drag them onto your scene as you see fit. The way this helps me is that for random encounters, I don't have to set up everything in advance. So for like a physical table, if you had a random encounter set up, you would have to have the mini set up and have pre-rolled their stat blocks to see how many hit points they have. Uh, and in Foundry, you can do that. There's that buffer area on the outside of your maps where you can kind of drag in all your actors that you need potentially for a scene and roll in advance all of their hit points. But it takes a lot of time. And one of the things that I've really found is the more actors you throw in a scene, the slower the system becomes, particularly if you're running on slow internet or I'm just running it on my one laptop. So it's a, you know, it's a, it can eat up a lot of resources. What Better Roll Tables does for me then is I can roll, it'll throw those actors inside my chat and then drag them off one by one. And I use another module called Token Mold that will do a couple of things. The two that I really enjoy is that it sets a unique name for each token. So it's gonna add a number next to each token that you drop in so you can tell what the difference between the two creatures are, if they are the same type. But also when you drag it in, it's going to use the hit dice formula for that actor and roll their hit points every time you drag one onto a scene. So let's take a look at how this works. So you can see I have a roll table here and I have four items, so it's gonna roll a 1d4, and when I roll, it will show up on the chat. So let's go ahead and roll and see what happens. So it rolled a two, and then what it did is it rolled another two, and that got me two stone golems. So we're gonna close this, and I'm gonna show you the token mold settings here. So it actually appears in the top of your actor's directory, and you can change your settings here. So for name, you can say add Arabic numerals. You can actually have it go up for a different number of 
steps each time you throw a new token in so people can't sit there and count well you put 12 so there's got to be 12 of these creatures and you can also add random adjectives from the dictionary which can actually be kind of fun uh, let's turn that on for now and we'll see how this actually works so we'll save and close let's go over here and here's the two stone golems and i'm going to drag them out there's the dice there's the second there's the dice so 184 and 199 hit points accordingly. And uh, this one is hot. This one is inquisitive. You can see that it gave them different names. It didn't put it up the step. I'm having a little trouble with that. But, uh, you know, when you throw them into combat now, I'm going to throw them both into combat. It actually is going to show their different names on there. So it's going to be able to tell the difference in the actors who are involved in a combat. So that's really cool. Let's end the combat there. and we'll delete these. The combination of token mold and better roll tables for me works really, really well. Uh, it lets me take a random encounter and set up how many of these different creatures that I want in each different potential setting and then drag them on as I need them. I don't have to preset them up. I just have to set up the situations and I can do everything else on the fly. That is very, very helpful. Just a little bit less prep. Anything that makes my life simpler as a GM for me is really, really good. A couple of things I'm going to be taking a look at in the next couple of weeks. The first is a review of a game that is basically Thundar the Barbarian, the role-playing game. We're going to be taking a look at Barbarians of the Ruined Earth, which is a really interesting post-apocalyptic role-playing game. Some fascinating concepts in there, and I'm looking forward to finishing the book so I can do my review. Also coming up, I'm going to be reviewing yet another Foundry VTT module because Quest Log is one of the coolest things that I've used with my campaign in a really long time. So until then, folks, happy playing, everyone.